We'll get started and it's a pleasure to be uh, with you today and presenting this uh, webinar on building and infrastructure design. Uh, there will be a chance for questions at the end and that if you do have any questions um, or want any comments, etc., uh, please use the chat as well. I'm sure everyone's reasonably familiar with Zoom by now. Uh, so please put any messages or um, questions into the chat and I will make sure I address them towards the end. Thank you. Uh, so A2K, uh, we're in the infrastructure, building, mining, construction and manufacturing industries. Uh, and we play a vital role in helping those industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services such as consulting um, and education training as well. Uh, why A2K? So we shape the future of design and in turn we enable you through innovation to minimise your risks, improve your productivities and achieve excellence. Uh, we have an excellent ANZ footprint throughout the region and we are one of the largest Autodesk partners in the world. We are considered the business partner of, partner of choice uh, by many vendors and clients. Uh, we partner with major software and hardware vendors, including Autodesk, Microsoft, HP, uh, et cetera. Uh, we strive to exceed client expectations by understanding your challenges and delivering solutions through experience and innovation. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Ben Burns. I'm the Structural Technical Lead at A2K, uh, really working in that business workflow transformation and software implementation. Uh, I have over 25 years experience in the structural and consulting engineering industry. Uh, doing everything from industrial, commercial, infrastructure, um, high density residential uh, design and construction documentation. Uh, we do like to pride ourselves that our company does have a lot of uh, people that have been out there in the field. Uh, we haven't just been consultants, uh, we have that industry experience. Uh, I have been using Revit since about 2010. Uh, I've got a structural engineering associate diploma. I uh, do a lot of presentations in the industry and I'm a big um, advocate for automation. Uh, anything that you're doing regularly, you should try and automate. A little bit of our agenda today. So we're really going on about um, building an infrastructure design and it's really using that Autodesk AEC collection. So we go through a bit of an overview. Uh, we show some of those integrated workflows from design to construction from conceptual design and format, uh, generative design, uh, road and highway design, also structural engineering workflows. Uh, so all that is very sort of video, I'll be voiceovering through most of it. Uh, we, I will then go through how to access that collection. Uh, if you have it already, how to access it through your manage.autodesk.com. Uh, I'll also show a live demonstration where we can take a Revit model directly into Robot, which is the structural analysis software. And I'll also show how we can push a Revit model straight to advanced deal to start fabrication drawings. And like I said, I will do some Q&A at the end as well. Uh, so now I'll jump into a bit of a video here. So I uh, do bear with me. I've got a fair few fingers and a few pies as we go. So, um, yep. So this is about the collections and we're really going on about how we create spaces for work, education, leisure and community. So to do this, we really need an integrated set of tools. The AEC collection fulfills that need. The collection lets us coordinate across teams from design to construction. Every designer, engineer, and contractor has access to multidiscipline workflows that allow you to create with ease, explore designs, and build with confidence. To deliver high performing buildings and infrastructure that transform lives and communities. So, this is the AEC collection, and I'm going to go through that now.
Uh, do bear with me. I do have some of these little pause marks through the video. So every AEC projects begins with an idea and a multidisciplinary team working together with a collection of tools to bring it to life. Civil engineers start by developing an existing conditions model in InfraWorks. Point cloud and recap data and GIS info, such as sewer and flood information are added to enable the concept design of road and site layouts in a real world context. Switching to building design, a concept is sketched for a building in the site context by using Format Pro. Massing is refined, details added, and materials applied. The impact of sun and shadows is studied. Solar analysis is performed using Insight. That's used to conduct whole building energy analysis and optimization. Back in InfraWorks, the conceptual models are evaluated within the site context. Next, detailed building design is performed in Revit. The format mass is used to locate architectural elements. Dynamo is then used to study alternate designs and concepts through computational design. Structural and MEP engineers create models for engineering design, analysis, detailing, and documentation. The disciplines link their models to ensure the design remains coordinated throughout the process. As the building design comes together, civil engineers develop the detailed site design using civil 3D, including layouts, grading, and drainage design. Using vehicle tracking, vehicle movement can be simulated and analyzed then in InfraWorks. A visual can be generated to improve understanding of the design. The next building can then be designed. As before, the projects moves from concept, com from concept to completion with Format Pro and Revit. Structural and MEP designers join the project to create a highly detailed coordinated design. During peak pre-construction, design teams and contractors can perform clash detection on the buildings and site models in Navisworks. Together, the team can identify clashes between structural steel framing and mechanical ducts, as well as site utilities and networks in the infrastructure design. Identifying any and enabling resolution of any issues, design intent, constructability, and fabrication before construction even begins. Finally, we can also conduct 4D simulation to understand phasing and construction sequencing, taking it one step closer to the field. The AEC collection gives every designer, engineer and contractor the tools and interoperability to deliver buildings and infrastructure projects with confidence. Uh, we're now going to touch on format specifically. So Revit 2022 has expanded functionality which better integrates with Format Pro. You can translate Revit elements seamlessly into a Format Pro session using the new 3D sketch functionality. Continue exploring and fine tuning the design using the fluid and intuitive modeling capabilities in format. 
send format geometry directly into Revit. Format materials are preserved seamlessly as Revit materials. Using visibility graphics, you can control the display of format layers, improve inter intuitive design exploration workflows with this seamless integration of Format Pro and Revit. Generative design is one we'll be looking at now as well. So it was introduced in 2021. Using generative design, you can rapidly generate design alternatives based on your goals, constraints, and inputs. Then explore, optimize, and make informed decisions with your team. You start with ready-made studies that you can explore and generate design alternatives based on desired outcomes. Specify your goals, then leverage the power of generative design to create multiple design options that you can review and assess collaboratively. You can fine tune and run the process again, amending your inputs and goals as required to find the best solution possible. These ready-made built-in studies are only your starting points. You can carefully customize these studies and add new ones through Dynamo to help meet your own team standards and challenges. For example, maybe your client wants to expand their building with a new wing. You need to optimize rentable space while minimizing cost. Generative design will help you find the optimal outcome. Then you can take the design directly into Revit for further development. Or maybe you are organizing or designing a new office and need to maximize the number of desks but minimize the distance to exits. Generative design can help optimize it using your most important metrics, desk count, aisle width, so you can find the most desirable solution. And if the tenant wants clients to have the best views, generative design can find the best spot for furniture. You can generate viewpoints from various locations, creating the best designs for what matters to you most. These studies are completely customizable and you can add your own via Dynamo, and design options with your team. In this next one, we're really going to explore how 3D and civil infra works can work together. The AEC collection also allows users to create road and highway models with greater efficiency than ever. In Recap, Recap Pro, Users can view and manage point cloud data obtained from LiDAR or drone technologies. Users can import the point cloud into the InfraWorks model seamlessly. Users can run traffic and mobility simulations that reflect existing site and traffic conditions. InfraWorks will also extract from the point cloud critical information using the automated linear feature extraction tool. This data can be fully utilized in Civil 3D during the design process. Collaboration in Civil 3D and BIM 360 design helps design teams stay connected. With Civil 3D, users can accurately reflect existing site conditions with greater detail. The Arc GIS con connector is now available in Civil 3D, and it allows users to access the metadata that can be imported into their models. Leverage, leveraging the tools in Civil 3D road designs can quickly lay out alignments, feature lines, profiles, and corridors. Based on design criteria, this data can be used for designing roads that can be modified and updated easily. The corridors contain the quantities required for estimates. Users can now utilize the power of design automation with Dynamo for Civil 3D which helps process routine or complex tasks quickly and effectively. The tools in Civil 3D help create, produce the documentation required for roadway models. Dynamic road cross sections can be quickly created.
The roadway rehab corridor can be created based on point cloud data. The corridor can read existing pavement and edge lines to deliver precise pavement quantities and details. Users can add corrected measures to improve the data. Civil 3D allows users to view and drive the final model to inspect design details. These tools help to create a final model that includes precise details, feature properties and design attributes. Uh, we're now going to focus a bit more on the structural design side of it. So we're going to go through both Revit and how that works together with um, Advanced Steel, et cetera. So Revit supports the building information modeling process for structural engineers by providing a physical model for use for documentation and coordination and an associated analytical model to use for analysis and design. Using your Revit for BIM authoring, structural engineers can easily exchange data with robot structural analysis software. Robot structural analysis software offers advanced modeling, finite element analysis, and code checking capabilities for any type of structure and material. This interoperability between Revit and Robot Structure Professional supports an iterative design process, enabling rapid exchanges of data between designers and engineers and enhancing that collaboration. In addition to facilitating integrated design and analysis workflows, Revit also serves as a BIM platform connecting design to detailing and fabrication of both concrete and steel structures. Revit provides tools enabling detailers to model 3D concrete reinforcement, create shop drawings and generate bending schedules in an advanced BIM environment. From highly accurate 3D concrete detailing to quality 2D documentation, Revit offers outstanding capabilities for production efficiency and versatility. Prefabrication can shorten project schedules, improve productivity, and improve site safety. Revit supports multiple stages of the precast workflow, offering advanced tools that make the process of generating precast assemblies, shop drawings, and files for computer-aided manufacturing machines. Structural engineers can model detailed steel connections using hundreds of parametric detail configurations. Custom connections can be created using easy to use editing tools. Propagate connections can be utilized to speed up the detailing process as it detects similar conditions and automates the process by applying the corrected con required connection to appropriate locations. Structural analysis results visibility in Revit tightens the integration between analysis and detailing phases, helping engineers make better design decisions when adding connections to the structural model. By connecting engineers and detailers through a seamless design and detailing workflow, firms can reduce the times required time to fabrication, whilst also reducing errors and rework along the way. Advanced steel users can directly utilize models created in Revit, automatically generating fully annotated shop drawings, bills of materials, and NC DXF files for fabrication. So that's really the end of the video portion of it. So you can see there how the whole collection can work together, going from that concept stage through to the fabrication and on-site construction using a combination of Revit, Navisworks, InfraWorks, they can all work seamlessly together. Uh, I'm now going to uh, go through to like a bit of a live demonstration. Uh, so I'm going to first show how the Revit model can go directly out to robot. Um, obviously we're limited on time. I, I can't show all the workflows, 
Uh, we do do other webinars where we really focus, um, instead of this more broad overview, uh, we do do webinars where we focus specifically on some workflows. So please um, uh, look out for the future ones, or we have done some previous ones as well, which you can probably find on our YouTube channel, um, A2K Technologies YouTube channel. So I'm really going to show uh, Revit to Robot first, and then I'm going to show how I can take a steel model from Revit to Advanced Steel. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to do Revit. So I'm just jumping to Revit here. Uh, this is just a basic um, sample project. Uh, some of you may be familiar with if you are Revit users. And I can take this directly out. So I'm, under the Analyze tab here, you can see that we have a link directly to Robot Structural Analysis. So um, I can basically just uh, come in here and do a Robot Structural Analysis link. Uh, now you can see at the moment, um, I don't even have a uh, robot open. So if I do hit this and go to my st robot structural analysis link, um, I'm going to send the model and I'm going to make it a direct integration and okay. Uh, this will prepare the model for export and basically open it directly up in robot structural analysis. Uh, will take a second, but you can see it's taking, uh, there's a lot of steel in here. You can also see that there are some precast assemblies uh, and there's also reinforcement in some of the walls. Um, you sometimes always do get a couple of errors. So um, I could look at the report uh, just to show you what's in it. Uh, you'll see here that most of everything went okay. Um, I probably have one warning where um, like, yeah, the regional settings are not set to United States, uh, which is what I wanted. And I uh, just close that. And you can see how that has brought the model directly into my robot analysis. Uh, you can see how it specified the footings properly and I can go through and start to uh, do my analysis and add loads to the end, uh, winged, et cetera, to this building. Uh, it's brought through all the members. I can see how the frame's working and it's uh, fully in there. Now it does stay live linked to Revit. So uh, if I go back to Revit and uh, let's say, I'll just uh, delete this corner. So I can delete that corner just simply. Um, obviously, I'm sort of breaking some parts. I'm doing it a bit haphazardly just for the demonstration. Uh, if I now go back to robot, I can come to the add-ins and I can simply go to integration and re-bring in that model, uh, update that model. So I'm, I'm just going to update the model this time and just hit OK and you'll see how this corner wall will now disappear accordingly. Uh, so again, I can see that events report, which I don't need to, and you can see how that has updated it. So you can do that full structural analysis using the, the power of robot structural analysis, and then basically take that back and forth through to uh, robot and Revit. Um, the other one I'm going to show, uh, so I'm just going to show quickly as well, how we can um, get one from or get a steel model. Uh, directly out as well. So I do have a steel model here. Now um, they do work a little bit better when you have broken the view down to just the steel. Uh, it does like it will bring the concrete and that across to advanced steel, but um, it will bring it, it bring it in as concrete elements. It may bring it in as placeholder elements as well. So I generally like to just break it down to the steel work. So uh, you can see here, I've just got all my steel work. I've got a couple of beams without a home here because they were on like a concrete wall, uh, but all the rest are sort of, um, I haven't done any connections as such. Uh, and I've probably got my purlins uh, sitting a little bit too low on uh, particularly that one. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is to basically take that straight across into advanced steel. So to do that, I'm going to go to the add-ins 
and there is an advanced steel extension here. And I'm just going to simply export this model. Uh, export it as an advanced export. And I'll find some way to save it. I'll just save it over the previous one. And yes. Uh, so we saw how quick that was, and now I can basically jump to advanced steel. Um, one thing that's probably good to point out is try and always be in the same version. Um, you do, it, it does work, like um, you shouldn't really have any errors, but it's always good to match your versions. So um, you can see here I'm using 2022 and 2022.1 um, here. Uh, I will go through. Uh, how to download and access these as well. So I'm just going to open a new model. Uh, so this is just new. It's just coming with my template. And I can go to the um, add-ins. Uh, actually, I'll go to export and import. And I can now import that model directly from Revit. So uh, that uh, the um, transfer file is an SMLX file. Select that and bring that in directly. And you can see how it's brought that exact model in. Uh, then I can use like the power of advanced steel to really start to uh, fabricate this. So I'll just change it to like a conceptual so we can see it a bit clearer. I could almost come straight to my um, home tab connection bolt. I'll just do a quick base plate as such. So I'll select just a single base plate. Select my column and place my base plate accordingly. I'm not going to change it too much. I will just keep that. And you can see how quickly and powerfully I can straight away just select it and propagate that joint and propagate that joint to every same uh, column and really then start to get out my designs quite quickly. So the uh, connections themselves, um, so uh, to, to access your collection, uh, it really is a matter of going through your manage.autodesk.com site. Um, I do have that open here. So that will take you, it will show you all the updates. Um, do be aware there's, there are a lot of updates that have come through lately. So um, Revit 20.1.1 was released, um, I think on November 10. So there has been an update. So just remember uh, always to come in and check your, oops, not, don't do that. Uh, make sure you don't minimize your ribbon. That's a uh, rookie error number one. Uh, do make sure you come to your about and you can see which build you're currently on. Uh, so there was one that uh, came out just in November 10. Always best, uh, especially if you're a subscriber, always try and use the latest version. Um, one thing I can recommend is a lot of people do, um, everyone sees the sign it shine in your toy like Revit 2022 and they all jump on it. Uh, one thing I would always recommend is just to wait for that first hot fix to come out. So do always try and wait for like 2022.1 to come out. Uh, I'd rather someone else catch all the bugs. Um, it does get tested very heavily, but uh, it's always a good idea to wait for that first release. Uh, so 2022.1.1 is now out. That came out in November. Uh, again, you can access your updates through your desktop app. So if you do go through the desktop app down in the bottom here, uh, you'll see all the products you have available and you will see any updates that you can get. Uh, you can see how in through here, um, generative design for 2022, uh, I do need to update that. So you will get your updates available here. Uh, just to always keep an eye. Uh, you do get the updates here directly. So you can look through the different uh, software packages you are using, or you can go just straight to updates and it'll show all the updates that are available for the products that you currently have installed. Uh, so do try and make sure you keep your updates um, up to date. Uh, to access the collection, again, you can go through that manage.autodesk.com. Uh, you do need to allocate uh, if you are the 
um, coordinator of your company, uh, you do need to allocate the connection, the collection to people. Uh, they can then come in and hit all products and services. Uh, this will give them access to all the products that they have access to. And then it's just a matter of installing the ones accordingly. So you can see I've got uh, BIM Collaborate, Civil 3D, et cetera. And you can just uh, add in the um, collection as you need to. Uh, insight for energy analysis, et cetera. Um, your rivets and the like. Uh, you can take items directly across from um, InfraWorks as well, directly into by using the civil structures add-on. Uh, that will bring directly uh, InfraWorks model straight in. So, and there's a lot of other add-ins you can get. The, the advanced steel add-in uh, is another update as well. So do get that. And you do get the synchronized, so you can synchronize. Um, in other words, if I did take out this column here and delete that column, again, that will synchronize directly through. Uh, one thing you do need to uh, look at is you really need to, so that's that's loading it. Um, I should be pushing it out the other way. Um, uh, one thing you do need to look out for, especially if you're taking your steel work through to advanced steel, uh, do ensure that your mapping is correct. Um, I have a mapping file and I have mapped a lot of those members, so they have come through all directly as they should. Uh, do make sure your mapping is correct. Uh, don't rush through it. If you do sort of rush through it, it will sort of pick like default members and that, which um, sort of Revit family steelwork is not the same as advanced steel um, block steelwork as such. So you do need to map them correctly. Um, what a lot of people do is they do um, map it, but then they sort of lose patience with it and just hit sort of enter, 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 which puts in all the default members. Uh, and once you have sort of mucked up your mapping, it sort of retains that. So you will need to... Um, sort of redo your mapping, like re redo that file. But any any item that you have mapped, if it finds it again, you won't need to remap it. So do take the time to map correctly. And uh, we can then use this to get out, um, to do our numbering and get our bill of materials all out exactly through here. Um, has anyone got any questions? There's no real questions coming through. So um, I have shown uh, through your manage.com, uh, that is how to access your collection. Uh, do just Google and hit your manage.com.autodesk.com, which will take you through to your homepage. And that's where you can access the connection, the collection. Uh, using all these products, uh, InfraWorks, Format, Revit, uh, Robot, structural analysis, and exporting these directly to Navisworks as well. Uh, you can perform clash detection and really start to um, get those like clashes and sort stuff out straight away. So we can see I do have a slight clash here with my uh, GERT and that beam. Um, again, very easy to just export this straight out to Navisworks. Uh, so I do have Navisworks as well. Uh, generally, I would prefer to, to um, bring it into Navisworks as the native model. Um, I can't, I could run clash detection, it would probably take me a while to set up, but if I do just uh, save this model, I'll just put that in the folder here as such. So just drawing three and save. And again, I, I do like to keep them in their native format in Navisworks. And if I go to manage, I'll be able to bring this model directly into Navisworks as well to perform that clash detection with mechanical models, uh, et cetera. Uh, again, you can see how I'm always sort of making sure the the uh, the versions line up together. Um, it just it just really gets it. It's a bit proactive to get in front of any issues. Uh, that'll cut down sort of ninety percent of any issues that you have. Um, I can then I well I can append and open that file directly. So if I do go to my uh, C drive, uh, let me just find my uh, drawing three, I believe it was. 
and bring that in. And you'll see how that will come straight across into Navisworks as well. Uh, I could bring Revit files directly into this, uh, the, the advanced steel file, which is like basically like an AutoCAD format, even though it's advanced steel, it's, it is in that AutoCAD format. Uh, and you can see how I've got this model um, directly in through there. Uh, I could change my visual style as well. So uh, you can see I'm on, um, I probably want to go more of a shaded style. So that's how that interoperability between all the Revit products and Autodesk products work. Uh, they, they would probably be the ones I would use most. Um, I am like sort of structurally minded. So I probably use uh, Revit most of all, uh, advanced deal, uh, robot structural professional analysis and uh, Navisworks from, from that structural point of view, that's, that's what I work with the most. Where from that sort of civil infrastructure, if I'm dealing with like a bridge or something, uh, generally use InfraWorks to sort of site the bridge and to um, do the conceptual design. And then I can take that directly into Revit as well and then start to allocate girders and the like. Uh, so I'll open up to some Q&A there. If you have any questions, uh, please put them in. And uh, just a reminder, uh, do please visit our a2ktechnologies.com.au slash events to view any upcoming webinars and also pay attention to our YouTube A2K Technologies channel, which does have a lot of recordings of the previous webinars. Uh, this webinar will also be up there as well if you do want to revisit it. Uh, please contact us if you have any, any questions. You can email us directly at info at a2ktechnologies.com.au. Uh, if you want any sort of workflow help or assistance, we can help you out and really show um, what products would be best for you and how to utilise them. Uh, if you are having any issues, we can um, try and sort of show you the best practice to get these workflows working. Uh, thank you for your time. If there's no questions, uh, that concludes the webinar.